Hello, I'm Andre J, and today I'm going to talk about the, the um, new addition to the VOCR Pi called Generic Geometry Utility. So Generic Geometry Utility is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It is offers you a bunch of generic geometrical things you can do with an input video. It allows you to transform things, warp them, rotate, um, add, a, uh, <laughs> add a kaleidoscope to them swirl and stuff, zoom, zoom in, oh, that's my mic. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's my tea. Uh, I drink a lot of tea, can you tell? <laughs> that's my tongue, and that's my tea. Okay, uh, should I stop doing this? Should I keep doing this? Uh, but yeah, so generic geometry utility. A little bit of backstory for what this actually, where this came from. Um, some of you may know I started development on a uh, uh, video mixer last year, and I got pretty far along with the basic sort of firmware kind of thing, um, but really just sort of ran out of time and resources to like do any more sort of hardware testing. So I sort of had this like really amazing set. There were three chunks of code, uh, three chunks of the, 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 the design side of things that I had pretty well mapped out. One chunk was geometrical things you can do. Um, like just the basic kind of things where you like things around, uh, stretch things out, rotate things, do some tiling stuff kaleidoscope things, and a bunch more. Uh, I had this whole um, color processing section where it was just like the, you could do in either RGB or HSB, um, attenuation, pedestal, you could do like simple things like levels, uh, uh, like upper and lower and mid levels, um, dithering, um, pixelization, Yeah, a bunch of really crazy color things, and then there was also what was really kind of like, for me, the big game changer was like a channel-based mixer. So you had a mixer which could do luma key, chroma key, um, different kinds of additive, subtractive, multiplicative, uh, or divis divisive blending, uh, in addition to um, channel-based mixing, which would allow you to do things like mix the red channel of video one with the saturation channel of video too, uh, which to my, uh, uh, from my experience, there's only one piece of gear, like video gear that was ever designed to do like channel-based mixing like that, and it was called the Hearn Video Lab. Pretty crazy piece of equipment, I'm pretty sure Signal Culture has one still. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the matrix mixing thing was pretty crazy. So that was Gravity Waves. Um, haven't really been able to get uh, much work on it because, uh, as I may have sort of alluded to in other ones of these episodes, uh, the whole thing about like running a business, doing the Etsy shop, and like putting together pre-built since for people just kind of ended up being, well, not just that, but also the advertisement and all the crap like that, uh, just kind of ended up sucking up way too much time and energy. Made it really hard for me to like focus and like get to work on like developing anything new because most of my work was just going into maintaining and selling the old things already and I was just kind of like well okay so I just traded off one kind of day job for another kind of day job uh, uh, and then you know <clears throat> 2022 came along and it turns out you can't get raspberry pies anymore and I was just like well fuck I gotta close down the Etsy shop for a bit um, and uh, I was just like, well, maybe this is an opportunity. Uh, maybe I can see if people are interested in sort of crowdfunding open source design in general. Um, see how that might work out. Um, I can still, I'll still be doing limited sales runs. Go to my website, sign up for the mailing list, and I'll let you know uh, uh, whenever the limited sales runs will be available. Uh, 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 it almost definitely won't be via Etsy. It'll probably just be via my website. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, so, and, and one of the things I'd really like to do if the crowdfunding thing works out is um, I want to make a desktop version of Gravity Waves that people can play with. So, like, 
we'll have this whole like geometry thing here along with the color processing thing along with the multi-channel like uh, 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 super crazy mixer and it will allow you to do things like it's not like it would allow you to luma key or um, subtractive blend or do the matrix mixing it would allow you to do all of those things so you could chroma key two things together and subtractive blend the stuff that wasn't chroma keyed out and do channel based mixing so this thing is a beast and i want to get it out there for folks um and i think the best way to do it is start off with the desktop thing and then once the semiconductor shortage like stops like you know fucking over small uh scale uh, uh distributors and whatnot uh i can actually get back to making the hardware shit for that like reality I'll share all of the hardware information, share all of the firmware, and like everyone who wants to have a Gravity Waves uh, could theoretically just like put together their own. Maybe I'll do a limited sales thing. I might have to if the whole like, um, yeah, if you don't want me to stop selling things, then 100% don't subscribe to the Patreon because then I'll just be forced to like sell things. But the trade off for that is that if I'm doing all these sales runs and all that shit, then I won't really be able to develop new things. So, it's a trade-off but yeah generic geometrical utility so let me go through just the the each one of these controls one by one so on the top the top four sliders i'll have to do with a uh a shear matrix so the first one is going to stretch things out horizontally i always get horizontal and vertical mixed up um this i might be saying that wrong uh, and then the second slider is going to shear things in the horizontal direction. Maybe it's vertical. Uh, I, I can never be sure. The, the third knob shears things in the vertical direction or the horizontal if I was wrong. And then the fourth knob is going to stretch things out the other way. And this one kind of adds a little flip in there. Uh, yeah, both of the stretches kind of have a little flip involved in them. So that's kind of handy. And these are all bipolar controls. And then the next two knobs control the sort of spiralized thing. And you know, I thought I had these ranges set to something higher, so I'm going to have to like go back and fix the ranges on that. Um, but spiralize, uh, from left to right, you've got the uh, angle of the spiral, and then you've got the amplitude of the spiral, and then you can change the x and y uh, center of the spiral. So you make the x and y spiral all the way off to the side and get this weird kind of like, uh, uh, I don't know. What does this make me look like? I have some sort of... Uh, it makes me look more like the file of huge Excellent. Um, and then on the bottom, we've got X Displace. Something interesting to know about X Displace, we can turn on the toroid thing. And that'll wrap things around toroidally, like you might remember from Wavepool. Uh, we can also do mirror. Uh, so it'll wrap things around in a mirror way. Y displays and the Y things will wrap things around mirror styles as well. Uh, Z displays zoom way into my mirror, zoom way out. Uh, we've got uh, this is really hard to see with all the other effects on. This is the um, X axis rotation, so full X axis rotation, full Y axis rotation. Z axis rotation. And something right at the end of the chain there is kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope allows you to kaleidoscope whatever input you have with a pretty large degree of uh, rotations. And it's a continuous kaleidoscope. So you start off with, oh, it just flips up that way, then it flips up that way, and then it kind of keeps adding more and more scopes into the collide as we go like that. So yeah, those are basically the controls. There's one more secret control in here too. So if I press the little, uh, I think it's the, it's above the play button, right underneath the word marker on the nano control. Is that it? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's going to switch the input into uh, feedback. So just do some internal feedback on whatever you've got and apply all the same geometrical stuff to it. Um, so you can, there's not really too much funky stuff you can do here, like in terms of like with the input, there's just sort of this like default little rotating like uh, uh, 
huge shifting square thing that I throw in for tests, but uh, this is the kind of thing I usually, like, this is very much exactly like what I do for, like, demoing stuff, so I thought it'd be interesting just to sort of share, like, uh, what does, like, an Andre J demo project look like? This is exactly just an Andre J, like, demo project. <laughs> this is what it looks like before it gets, like, you know, amplified and turned into a wave pool or the full-scale gravity waves thing. But yeah, so that's more or less it for generic geometrical utility. Um, as always, have fun. Let me know what you'd like to see from this in the future things in the comments. Keeping in mind that this is just sort of like a, a, a demo version of like a very tiny chunk of gravity waves. There's an entire other set of geometrical things that I didn't fit in here this time. But if gravity waves doesn't get a chance to make it out there sooner or later, I'll just do generic geometrical utility and add the, the second set of geometry things on it. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, thanks a bunch, and as always, have fun.